In this video, I will walk you through free response question number four from the 2001 AP Calculus exam. Let h be a function defined for all x not equal to zero, such that h at four is equal to negative three, and the derivative of h is given by this function for all x not equal to zero. Part A. Find all values of x for which the graph of h has a horizontal tangent, and determine whether h has a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither at each of these values. Justify your answer. As soon as you see the phrase horizontal tangent, you should be thinking, oh, that means h prime is going to equal zero. So let's find the values where h prime is equal to zero. Well, a fraction will only equal zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So let's set x squared minus two equal to zero. Adding two to both sides, we get x squared is equal to two. Taking the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of two. So these are the answers to the first part of the question. These are the x values for which h has a horizontal tangent line. However, in order to determine whether h has a local maximum or a local minimum at these values, we need to make a sign chart. And in order to make a sign chart, we need all of the critical numbers. So uh, these are critical numbers because uh, critical numbers are the values of x that cause h prime to either equal zero or that will cause h prime to be undefined. So uh, we need to also consider where h prime is undefined. We can just look to the denominator to understand that h prime will be undefined um, when x is equal to zero. You can't divide by zero. So this is an additional critical value. So we have three critical values which need to go on a number line to make our sign chart. So here are my critical values in order on the number line. Make sure you have the sign chart labeled as pertaining to h prime. We need a row for each factor in this quotient. So we need a row for the numerator, x squared minus two, and a row for the denominator. We need to determine if these factors are positive or negative in each interval. Let's start with x squared minus two. The factor of x squared minus two gave us the critical numbers of negative radical two and positive radical two. So I'm sort of highlighting this because these are the values at which the signs might change. So I just need to uh, do a test value in three intervals for this particular factor. Let's consider a value of x that is less than negative radical two. Negative radical two is negative one point something. So uh, for example, what if we said negative two? If x is negative two, that would be negative two squared, which is four minus two, that's positive. So we have a positive in this interval. In the middle interval, I could just pick zero. If I let x be zero, then I just have negative two. So we have negatives in both of these intervals. And if I pick a value that is greater than radical two, for example, the number two, that would again be four minus two, which would be positive. Of course, x itself will be negative for values that are less than zero, and positive for values that are greater than zero. But what about the overall value of h prime? In the first interval, we have a positive uh, divided by a negative, so that is a negative. In the second interval, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive. We know that the derivative tells us whether or not the original function is increasing or decreasing. 
So because h prime was negative in the first interval, that means the original function was decreasing. And then the positive h prime means that h was increasing in this interval, decreasing in this interval, increasing in this interval. Since h of x goes down and then up, we know that the critical value of negative radical 2 is a local min. Similarly, radical 2 is also the location of a local min. However, be careful. When you write your summary statement in a moment, do not justify that you have a local min by saying that h of x is decreasing and then increasing. Instead, stick to the first derivative and say that um, we have a local min because h prime goes from negative to positive. So here is our summary statement and justification. h of x has a horizontal tangent at negative radical 2 and positive radical 2. h of x has a local min at negative radical 2 and positive radical 2 because h prime changes from negative to positive. Part B. On what intervals, if any, is the graph of h concave up? Justify your answer. We can tell if a function is concave up or concave down based on the sign of the second derivative. If f double prime is positive, the function is concave up. If f double prime is negative, the function is concave down. We are given h prime, so let's find h double prime. But first I'm going to rewrite this a little bit using the principle that a plus b over c can be rewritten as a over c plus b over c. So h prime can be written like this. But then we see that h prime will equal x minus, and I'm going to bring this x out of the denominator and write it as x to the negative 1 power. So if I take the derivative of this derivative, then I will have the second derivative. The derivative of x is 1, and then using the power rule, negative 1 times negative 2 is going to be positive 2, and we subtract 1 and get the negative 2 power. So that means that h double prime at x is equal to 1 plus 2 over x squared. In order to find the intervals where h is concave up, we will need to make a sign chart of h double prime. So we need to know where h double prime is equal to 0 and where it is undefined. So let's start by setting this equal to 0. So 1 plus 2 over x squared is equal to 0. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we have 2 over x squared is equal to negative 1. There is a shortcut that we can do where we swap these two, and we end up with 2 over negative 1 is equal to x squared. But that means x squared equals negative 2, and this equation has no solution. So we have no key values there. What about where h double prime is undefined? We see the denominator of x squared, so we know that h double prime will be undefined when x is equal to 0. This is our only key value, so let's put this on a number line and make a small sign chart. Make sure you label your sign chart as pertaining to h double prime. Let's use a test value to decide whether this is positive or negative in each interval. For example, if x is negative 2, what would happen to the sign of this expression? Well, a negative 2 in the denominator, you square it and it becomes positive. So then everything is positive, so you know this is going to be positive. And of course, if we p pick a positive value, then, well, you know, everything is going to be positive. So h double prime is going to be positive in both intervals. That means that uh, the original function h will be concave up in each interval. 
So h of x is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity because h double prime is positive. Part C, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of h at x equals four. Whenever they ask me to write the equation of a tangent line, I always use point slope form y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. This reminds me that all I need is a point and the slope. In the setup of the problem, they told us that h of 4 is equal to negative 3. So they have given us the point 4 comma negative 3. They also gave us h prime, which we can use to find the slope of the tangent line. We just need to evaluate h prime at 4. So that will be 4 squared minus 2 divided by 4. So that means uh, 16 minus 2 over 4, which is 14 divided by 4, which is 7 over 2. Now that we have a point and the slope, we can write the equation of the tangent line. The equation of the line tangent to h at x equals 4 is y minus y1. So I'm actually going to put y plus 3 because minus a negative is a positive, is equal to the slope times x minus x1. So x minus 4. Part D. Does the line tangent to the graph of h at x equals 4 lie above or below the graph of h for x greater than 4. Why? We don't know what h of x looks like, but let's pretend for a moment that it looks like this. You might have a tangent line that is above the function, like this one, or you might have a tangent that is below the function, like this one. It all depends on the concavity. If h is concave down near the point of tangency, then the tangent line sits on top of the function like this. If h is concave up near the point of tangency, then the tangent line sits below the function like this. Back in part b, we found that h is concave up for all values of x except for 0. So here is a concavity model for h. Because h of x is concave up for all values of x that are greater than 4, I know that the tangent line will be below the function for x greater than 4. You do all of that analysis in your head. Here's what you write down. The tangent line lies below h of x for x greater than 4 because h of x is concave up for x greater than 4.